You know, when it comes to fishing our big reservoirs, I would have to say the number one hideaway for the largemouth bass, it would have to be creek or river channels. Why? Well, the answer is mighty simple. Availability of deeper water close by. From the time a bass is born, after he grows, say six months to a year, he instinctively will seek out and select and use places close to deeper water. I don't care if he's 40 feet deep, you can bet deeper water is gonna be close by. About the only time they'll leave this escape route is during the spawn. And you can bet even then some form of a shallow channel is close by. So how about joining us today as we fish one of my favorite forms of structure, a creek channel with my all time favorite lure, a jig and pork combination. Cover right there. Our fish. Ooh, he's not all that big, but he's. He's going, old boy. Yeah. Ooh. Easy. Come here. Oh, slim. You've been on slim fast or something, hadn't you? Huh? Hard fighting little rascal. Where you going, buddy? Come your time. Strong. You don't. All right, you throw that water on me. I don't care. <laughs> Come on in here, you threw. Talk about powerful. Boy. He calmed down. Little fat gooded thing, you. <laughs> that built for power, isn't he? Most of our big reservoirs, whether highland, midland, or lowland lakes, have both river and creek channels that meander across their floors. The channels I like best are the creek channels found on lowland and midland lakes because the channel edges there are a lot more fishable than river channel edges. This is because they're not as large and the water there is usually more protected. Also, the actual depth break is more defined. Now, where I begin my search for bass depends heavily on the time of the year, the water clarity, and the water temperature. During early spring, when the channel coves begin to warm in the low to the mid 50 degree range and the water clarity becomes semi-clear to clear, I start looking for bass along the channels in a depth of 10 to 15 feet, especially where the creek forms an irregular feature, such as a junction, a U-bend, or an S-bend along the channel. As the water continues to warm in the days and weeks to come, the small pockets in the creek coves seem to produce well, and the last 50 to 100 yards in the tail of the creek can be excellent also. If there's a channel bank, it'll be the best choice by far. This usually occurs as the water temperature reaches the low to the mid 60s, and the bass will usually stay in this area until after the spawn. Normally the spawning period will last for several weeks until the water temperature reaches the low to mid 70s. As late spring approaches, bass begin to group up and move back to the channel edges, and with each passing day, they move a little deeper along the ledges. By midsummer, many of these bass have moved from the creek coves on out to the mouth of the coves, 
and then on out into the main lake. Here again, the majority will set up housekeeping along the key features of a channel. Places like where a saddle is formed, where two channels run together, or along the U in S bends. Naturally, to find these underwater hideaways, a good sensitive graph, a good map, a lot of patience, and hard work is a must. There's one. Good fish. Yes. You through? <laughs> Come up here to me. Easy. See that rat? You liked that, didn't you? Yes, you did. Yep, good fish. I like that. I ain't kidding you. You know, when you talk about the senses of a fish, uh, of a bass especially, you know, you've got sight, you've got smell, and you've got hearing. Sight is the predominant sense. He's got to see it to eat it. That's kind of like, you know, I can smell a steak cooking. I can hear it sizzling cooking, but I've got to see it in order to eat it. Well, the same applies to that fish. But the advantages to sound is the fact that he might not be able to see an eye contact bait. And when we talk about eye contact baits, a jig is predominantly an eye contact bait. But when you can add sound to that jig, you've doubled the effectiveness of the jig because the fish could be, you know, out of distance, in behind something and he's not going to see that jig but he'll pick that sound up and then he'll search out the source of that sound and that's why it's so important when you're fishing a bait like this is to throw it back in the same spot several times even if you don't get a hit just throw it back in there a couple of times because that fish could have picked that sound up and start a search pattern for the source of the sound and by you creating a path two or three casts in the same place, uh, it'll improve your odds tremendously. <laughs> Good night, that fish right there. Like he weighs six pounds. You through? Okay. Won't turn you loose. You're just gonna wear yourself down. Get all fatigued. Yeah, you are. Healthy thing too. Check you later. The key to successful structure fishing is to establish a depth pattern. And this too takes time. But once that magic level is found, it can hold for several months. And all that so-called hard work can be very rewarding. As summer ends and fall rolls around, water temperatures begin to cool down, and it's a time when pattern fishing can really keep you hopping. During the fall, it's not uncommon to catch good numbers of bass deep, even deeper than you caught them back in the summer. And you can also catch them in the same areas where you found them in the spring. 
the tail ends of the major creeks. This is because such areas attract huge schools of shad. And since shad is a preferred diet of bass at this time of the year, they'll be there in numbers to fatten up before winter arrives. As the days get shorter and the nights longer, the water chills even more. And this serves as a signal to our quarry that it's time to move deeper in search of thinner, warmer layers of water. As water temperatures drop into the low 50s to high 40s, most of the bass have settled down for a long winter's nap. Their metabolism is low, but they can still be caught. Maybe not as well as in the spring, summer, and fall, but they can be caught, provided you fish the right places, and that's along the creek ledges and the beds of the channels. Oh, big man. What you got? Come on. Come on. I'm gonna be hard on you. Well, open your mouth. There we go. There we go. Yes, sir. Liked it, didn't you? You know, I hear a lot of fishermen talk about the weight of jigs as far as the size, what's best to use. Well, I personally find that I try to use the lightest weight jig that I possibly can the majority of the times. And the reason I do that is because I want that jig to look as natural as I possibly can. As I swim it along, it's got a much slower fall. When fish are super inactive, I can promise you they will hit a slow moving bait a lot better than they will a fast moving bait. In other words, a quarter ounce is an ideal weight it's a lot better naturally in shallow water than a 3 8 But even in deeper water, I do a lot better with a quarter as long as I can fish it. Now, I'm gonna have a lot better feel with a 3 8 ounce bait than I am a quarter. The 3 8 is gonna get to the bottom a lot quicker, but if there's a lot of real thick cover, I'm gonna have more trouble fishing the 3 8 than I would the quarter. And if I go heavier than a 3 8 to a half, I'm gonna have a whole lot more trouble. It's like fishing riprap. If you throw a heavy jig up on rocks and in the riprap, you're gonna hang it up a lot more than you would, let's say, a quarter ounce. You can swim the quarter ounce a lot better than you can a heavier jig. I realize, too, that when you get in real thick vegetation like you're flipping, you're gonna be better off with a heavier jig because you can knock it down through there and it'll penetrate that cover and go straight down and it'll work better than a quarter most of the time. But I'm saying as long as I'm out casting or working an area. I want to try to use the lightest weight jig that I possibly can. Pool, baby. Man. Oh. You fool yourself, aren't you? Come here. Big old chunky fish. Boy. Look at the belly on that. <laughs> That's a healthy fish. Yes, he is. Strong, too. Going back home. Whew, 
Man, that fish had got off of Swarney weighed seven pounds. He did weigh a good four. There you go. You're gonna get the man's camera all wet. Come up here to me. Yeah. Pretty stuff. You liked it, didn't you? <laughs> Do I know how to get him, boy? As I said, fishing this form of structure and establishing a pattern requires concentration and observation. You gotta carefully think your way through the problem and then come up with a good answer. As you become more familiar with channel fishing, you'll begin to recognize these promising spots almost automatically. And because you have the full confidence that the bass are there on that particular feature, you're bound to fish it harder and therefore do much better. I sure hope so. We'll see you next time.